Welcome to Hackbits, where we cover a variety of cybersecurity subjects. Join your host, Gaspar Martirano, as he interviews cybersecurity experts and discusses the latest cybersecurity news, trends, data breaches, and updates on state-sponsored cybercrime. Well, welcome everyone to this edition of Hackbits. I'm, I'm really excited to have uh, Kurt uh, Baumgartner with us from uh, Kaspersky. So, uh, Kurt, welcome to the show. Thank you, Gaspar. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you on. Uh, you know, I, 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 I want to know a little bit about you. So I want you to tell me just a little bit about your background, kind of when you started working in, uh, in uh, cyber or, or information technology and kind of give me the history of where you kind of came from. Yeah, glad to be here. Yeah, I'll talk about myself. Um, I've been working with the Kaspersky's Global Research Analysis Team since 2010, which is a really long stint for me as a researcher. I've been a, a principal uh, security researcher for the team. Uh, prior to that, I was a part of a startup uh, here in Boulder, Colorado, Um and we uh, merged with a company called PC Tools and were acquired by Symantec. So I ended up working with them for uh, a few years after the acquisition. And then prior to that, I was out in Silicon Valley. Um, I had been working for network on the network side of things. So I was working with a firewall producer that wanted to create an intrusion prevention system and uh, some gateway AV products back in... Uh, I think it was 2003. Um, so, you know, I was really building out my skills with um, parsing network traffic and high speed performance um, uh, data parsers. And then prior to that, I was a part of a network load balancing company um, back in 99 in, uh, in Sunnyvale, California. So, yeah, I was learning and working on... Um, network load balancing for some of the world's earliest and largest um, web properties and the DNS infrastructure. So yeah, it, my experience has bounced back and forth between uh, networking and host-based um, uh, technology. That's great. I'm actually trying to do the math. So you've been, you've been, you've been in the IT game for quite a while. So now, uh, have you always had an interest in technology? Did, did it really start with that job back in 1999 or were you kind of tinkering around before that? I, I always tell the story, if anyone listens to the podcast, you know, I had my first computer, quote unquote, when I was uh, 10 years old. It was a Timex yeah. Sinclair, Time Sinclair 1000 was, was the machine I had. So how, how early did you start kind of working with, uh, with, with uh, tinkering around with computers in general? Well, you know, kind of same as you. I, when I was a little kid, um, I found a, a Radio Shack computer in the back of my uncle's closet and I dragged it out and I figured out how to program it. And it was a, a silly little. Um, TRS-80? Was that the yeah. yeah, I think yeah. I think that was it. Oh, and it, was, it, had, yeah. it had a little TV monitor, a little black yeah. and white TV monitor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 uh, I always tell people they don't know the struggles that we had back in the day of like monochrome screens and black and white <laughs> monitors. Uh, and then when they did have color monitors, we had those ginormous, you know, <laughs> yeah. big gigantic TVs that basically sat in your desk. Uh, right. So, you know, when they started making these LEDs, I was like, wow, this is a whole new world. So it was beautiful. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Kaspersky. So you've been there for quite a while. Tell me a yeah. bit about your experience there. Because you, you said that that's actually great because, you know, how, especially in this world in cyber, it seems like people kind of jump a lot and can we do, you know, due to stress or, you know, whatever, work-life balance. But uh, to be at a company for so long, that's uh, kudos to you. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's been awesome. I, um, you know, I started out working remotely with them. Um, so at the time, um, I, I, I was, I had a child and I was taking some time off from, uh, from that previous uh, organization that got acquired by Symantec. And, um, while I was taking time off, uh, some guys from Kaspersky that I knew and had met at previous uh, international conferences like Virus Bulletin and a couple others, um, they said, oh, yeah, we're having a conference um, out in Cyprus. Do you want to come? And um, and I did. And I met basically a lot of R&D talent that I actually had kind of talked with over, over the years. I, I knew who Kaspersky was you know, back in 2003 and, um, and, uh, their work was, and their product was always pretty incredible. 
So, I mean, I, I knew quite a bit about the, the company already. And then I got to speak with all these engineers and researchers um, at, a, yeah, at one of their internal conferences, which eventually became SAS. And then I gave a presentation on a exploit kit and some of the exploits that were implemented in it uh, and how the Kaspersky products were doing with, with that exploit set um, at detection and prevention. So, yeah, um, uh, that's kind of how I, I got to know the, the R and D team and how I, um, how over time I kind of, I made these contacts and got to know these guys even before I was working here. Um, so yeah, so it's been kind of a wild ride. Um, I was looking mainly at mass exploitation and criminal activity, um, back in 2010, Mm -hmm. um, and then we started doing all sorts of reporting and research into a- APT activity all over the world. And we were early reporters on like Mini Duke and Cozy Duke. Uh, Dark Hotel was another big report that um, had a lot of traction back then. Um, and over the years, we did all this public reporting and all this research would just spill out with tons of indicators. And eventually we started... Um, You know, we had all these requests that we provide this stuff, you know, on a more sort of frequent basis, on a more regular basis, and people wanted to pay for it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I do a lot of work for customers that are interested in a lot of what we had been previously doing, which was um, generating all this content reporting on APT activity, but now they're paying for it. And we provide them with indicators and YAR rules. The YAR rules are very powerful ways for, you know, uh, uh, companies to detect this stuff on their own with an open source toolkit called Yara. Um, and then these full reports that are partly, I mean, almost educational for um, red teams, purple teams, blue teams, and uh, really help defenders nail down um, adversarial TTPs. So yeah, and and, and I think uh, you know companies understand the importance of threat intelligence and understanding you know what 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 they can do to obviously defend themselves against this cyber war that we're, we're fighting kind of on a daily basis. So tell me a little bit about like, what are your thoughts about 2021 so far? Kind of the, what's the landscape look like? It's almost over. So we're in Q4. So tell me yeah. what you think about the the year, uh, you know, kind of the year in review. I'm doing it a little early. Usually you talk about those things in December, but tell me what, what your thoughts are. Oh my gosh. The 2021 has been, has blown by. I mean, there's been so much activity from, I mean, different parts from different parts of, uh, uh, and different kinds of activity um, that we that we see all over the world. So the year began with with the end of 2020. So at, in December of 2020, we heard the the dark halo uh, announcement from FireEye that you know there was this massive operation going on and all this APT activity um, that hadn't been pinpointed. Um, but basically solar winds, this software vendor, uh, there was this massive supply chain attack that had been ongoing throughout 2020. And then the research and all of the discussion sort of leaked into the beginning of 2021. Um, but then that got cut off. So that got cut off by the Mic- Microsoft exchange vulnerabilities and that zero day exploitation that was going on around the world. I think that was in, at the end of March. March, uh, yep, yep, and, that's right. And, um, and you know, ex- on-premise exchange servers were just getting hacked all over the world by APT. Um, it was a, just this ongoing activity. And then uh, ransomware uh, took the spotlight. And um, instead of all these sort of newer and smaller APT groups, that we had been discussing for quite some time, just ransomware was everywhere. And it's been hitting, um, you know, not just US and European, but Middle Eastern and some Asian activity as well. But, oh my gosh, just ransomware incident after ransomware incident is gumming up supply chains, education institutions, small manufacturers. I mean, everybody's getting hit with this stuff. and, and, and in part, what was so disappointing about it 
is that so much of that, I mean, it's it's an almost an industry now. Um, so much of that ransomware activity is being um, enabled by open source red team tools. Uh, they adopt this stuff and they use it to um, really effective uh, impact. And, um, you know, there are all these jokes on Twitter going around about, you know, what's the difference between a, a red team pen, you know, pen test and a ransomware incident. And, you know, it, it, it's simply intent, you know, right. Um, right. <laughs> they're using the same stuff. And right. uh, that, that was pretty incredible to me. Um, sort of the volume of the activity and the volume of the, the damage that we're seeing from that. Um, so tell me a little bit about what Kaspersky does to help address those issues for businesses. Like what are kind of, what are, what are you doing? What, what is the company doing to help, uh, to help businesses, uh, you know, combat all this? Yeah. So, um, you know, the work that I'm a part of, we, we, we have this uh, threat intelligence service and we push out reports uh, about APT activity and then also about crimeware. So um, when it comes to ransomware, we do push out, um, you know, reports on the individual groups themselves, their activity, the targeting, and and what we're seeing on that end, um, along with the indicators of compromise, whether it's um, whether it's MD file MD5s and object hashes or domains that they're using to host Cobalt Strike servers. Um, you know, we, we, we provide those IOCs. And then in addition to that, we're providing the YAR rules that organizations can use to, um, to hunt for that type of activity on their networks. Um, in addition to that, we've always had, you know, a full product suite that um, organizations can, can uh, install to, uh, to fight ransomware. And it, you know, we, we do more tests than pretty much any um, company out there. And we're highly effective, if not the most effective against uh, ransomware attacks. So there's all sorts of things that we push out um, to defend against both the ransomware and the APT activity that we're seeing. So uh, we're going to wrap it up in just a minute, but just, uh, I just, you know, if you want to pull out your crystal ball, I always kind of end in this. So what do you, what do you think the future kind of holds? Like, what do you, what do you think it's going to look like? And let's look at 2022, 23, 24, uh, the attack's going to get worse. Or do you feel that, um, you know, are we going to get better? Is uh, AI going to play uh, a role in helping companies uh, fight this battle? Or what, what do you think kind of the future is going to look like? Yeah, you know, well, in the near term, uh, near term future, I, th I think, you know, work from home is still a, a real situation that's that's being supported and RDP and VPN solutions are going to continue. Any sort of remote enabling technology for employees is going to be attacked, um, whether that's vulner vulnerability research and exploitation research, you know, to actual ransomware operators taking advantage of what they're seeing. Um, so I think that's going to continue to be in uh, a real issue into 2022. You know, when you, when you talk about AI, you know, AI, so there's machine learning and, you know, I think in a few years, uh, AI will be a real, um, will be a real thing. The hardware will be there to support what is truly artificial intelligence, but for now it's still, you know, the realm of machine learning really. Um, right. And I, I do think that um, on the offensive side, there is research and there is offensive activity that is ongoing to defeat machine learning algorithms, mm -hmm. to identify sort of what defenders are putting together and using and how to confuse the, the malware or the machine learning algorithms and, and how it's being implemented. So I think that's going to progress over the next few years, the offensive activity. Um, but I do think uh, organizations are going to get much better at identifying um, attack surface and sort of uh, being able to better strategize and make decisions about how they enable employees with technology using results they're gathering from artificial intelligence enabled applications and tooling. Um, so I do think it has a, a it will have a, a, a bigger part in um, defenders playbooks, 
But yeah, that'll be a few years down the road yet. Well, uh, I really appreciate you coming on. I'm excited that Kaspersky is also participating in our uh, VIP event that we're having on November 9th. And, you know, we're, uh, we're going to have kind of a cyber mystery, uh, a la a murder <laughs> mystery party. And uh, I'm really interested to hear how, um, how Kaspersky could have helped, uh, you know, our, 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 the company that our, our fictional company, of course, that we made up to, to, to combat their, uh, their breach. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I appreciate you taking the time to come on and, you know, life ours and, and, and Kaspersky are, are close uh, partners. Uh, you know, we work together whenever we can. Uh, so for more information yeah. about life ours, you can always visit life That's L I F A R s.com and of course kaspersky so uh you know uh, we should probably spell it out too right <laughs> so is it is it, uh do you want to just just send people to the website or if they're interested in uh, knowing more about that intelligence uh where should they go for that information you know um i i really well from my standpoint being a part of great i like to send people to securelist.com okay. um and uh you know we do offer some amount of open like we open some of our information and, and accessibility to our portal in open tip, mm-hmm. uh, Kaspersky.com. But, um, I, I would first send everybody to secure list. It's the most Perfect. interesting and you can find links to other things there. Well, Kurt, I appreciate you taking the time to come on and, um, yeah. uh, I, I look forward to this. Maybe you'll come back on, uh, maybe you'll come back on again and we could chat, uh, in a couple of weeks or maybe we could just chat sometime next year and see if anything <laughs> you said actually happens <laughs> yeah. or it comes true. So thanks yeah. a lot. Kurt. I, I All appreciate right. Thank it. you, Casper. Take care. All right. You too.